new videos every day. I like to know things. Okay, so the last video I did was on critical thinking, and this video is going to be kind of along the same lines. Not only does media have a tendency to misrepresent, but advertising does as well. For instance, how many of you have seen the little commercial with the diagram of the brain and the brain cells explaining how antidepressants work? Well, do they really work like that? Let's dig a little deeper, use some critical thinking, and find out. To examine this a little further and use a little critical thinking, we're going to go straight to the manufacturer. What we're going to look at is the FDA approved prescribing information for the doctors. So the first one we're going to look at is Prozac. The antidepressant, anti-obsessive compulsive, and anti-bulimic actions of fluoxetine, which is the chemical word for Prozac, are presumed to be linked to its inhibition of central nervous system neuronal uptake of serotonin. What I want to do, though, is look at some of the words in this paragraph. The first one I want to look at is the word presumed. So the key word I want you to focus on is presume. And what I did was I looked it up in a couple dictionaries. First, I looked at WordNet, and it says, Take to be the case or to be true, except without verification or proof. I presumed his train was late. So to have without proof. Are they trying to say that they don't know? They're assuming that this medication is going to work? The next place I looked it up was American Heritage Dictionary. To take for granted as being true in the absence of proof to the contrary. We presumed she was innocent. The next one, the Kernerman English Multilingual Dictionary. To believe that something is true without proof, to take for granted. When I found the room empty, I presumed that you had gone home. So let's look at why they use the word presumed instead of using the words caused by, because of, resulted from. Is it because they don't know how antidepressants work? That's exactly why. So the next thing I want to look at is linked to. What the hell does that mean, linked to? I could say her pregnancy was linked to the drive-in movie, or I could say my divorce was linked to the lawyer. But what does that mean? There's no causal relationship. It's just saying somehow connected in some way. So let's look at this sentence again. Presumed to be linked to the reuptake of serotonin. So does that mean we kind of think it might be related, but there's no proof. Now we're going to look at Paxil. The efficacy of paroxetine is presumed to be linked to the reuptake of serotonin. So what this is saying is we think it has something to do with the reuptake of serotonin, but we don't have any proof. Now we're going to look at Cymbalta. Although the exact mechanisms of the antidepressant in humans are unknown, it is believed to be related to the... So in this one, instead of saying presumed and linked, they use the words believed to be related to. But they're a little more honest because in this one, they say the mechanisms of the antidepressant in humans are unknown. So Remeron, the mechanism of action of Remeron, as with other drugs effective in the treatment of major depressive disorder, is unknown. So in this one, not only are they saying that with their drug it's unknown, they're saying with all antidepressants it's unknown. Now Zoloft. The mechanism of action of Zoloft is presumed to be linked to the reuptake of serotonin. So again, we think it has something to do with the reuptake of serotonin, but we don't have any proof. Well, Butrin. The neurochemical mechanism of the antidepressant effect of Welbutrin is not known. So again, they're being more honest and they're telling us it's not known how it works. So I think you get the point. I could go on, but they all pretty much say the same thing. 
we've got this drug and we know that it inhibits the reuptake of serotonin and it also appears to have an antidepressant effect. So we think maybe they both are related somehow, but we're not sure, we don't have any proof, but we're gonna just assume that that's what happens. The next thing I wanna go over with you comes from a medical journal article called Mechanisms of Action by Thomas Kramer, MD. The question of mechanisms of action continues to haunt psychopharmacology. So basically how it works still haunts them in psychopharmacology. We make guesses based on the neurochemical effects of these compounds, which means we're still guessing. We have very little proof and sometimes very little data about whether the neurochemical effects that we find have anything to do with the therapeutic effect of the medication. Okay, so this comes from the Psychiatric Times, an article, Psychotherapy Perspectives in Medication Management by Simon Sobo, MD. Mental disorders are boldly portrayed as chemical imbalances in patient brochures, news articles, and other educational materials. The problem with this portrayal is that, while someday we may accumulate the knowledge to demonstrate the particulars of this perspective, no such chemical imbalances have been unequivocally demonstrated for any disorder. I would argue that there are certain psychological effects of medications that make them useful in a variety of mental disorders, not because they are necessarily correcting a chemical imbalance, but because the psychological effect is useful. Okay, also from the Psychiatric Times, written by several doctors, David Antonuccio, PhD, David Burns, MD, William Danton, PhD, and William O'Donoghue, PhD. Is there evidence that antidepressants correct a serotonin deficiency? We are not aware of any consistent or persuasive evidence that an abnormality of brain serotonin levels or receptors plays any causal role in depression or any other psychiatric problem. So despite what you see in commercials, which is marketing, they're trying to sell you something, there's no scientific evidence that depression or any other mental disorder for that matter are caused by serotonin abnormalities. One final reference by Dr. Wayne Goodman, who was the chairman of the Psychopharmologic Drugs Advisory Committee for the FDA. He is considered one of the foremost authorities in psychiatry. And he says, biological psychiatrists have looked very closely for a serotonin imbalance or dysfunction in patients with depression or obsessive compulsive disorder. And to date, it has been elusive. Although an SSRI antidepressant may work well in an individual, this doesn't prove that there is an underlying imbalance, defect, or dysfunction in the person's serotonin system. So just because an antidepressant had an antidepressant effect on a person doesn't mean that there was a chemical imbalance or that there was something wrong with their serotonin levels. Just so you know, there are four main scientific explanations on why antidepressants might work. The first one is the change in the neurotransmitters. The second is the placebo, and there are many doctors who believe that giving the antidepressants do have a purely placebo effect. The third is the new brain cell growth, also called neurogenesis. And the fourth is that the antidepressants seem to have an amphetamine-like side effect, which basically gives the person more energy. So how do antidepressants work? We still don't know. Again, the media and advertising grossly misrepresent scientific data and you can't accept it at face value. That's my video. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Please rate it, leave a comment, and I really love subscribers, so please subscribe. I'll see you next time. For hundreds of great more videos like this one, check out the Psyche Truth channel on YouTube.
because of. Did I already say that? No, I didn't. Okay, I'll start over. Foremost authorities. I f that up. But then I gotta look down. Okay, fine. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!